Welcome to BreezeLine, where the sky's the limit thanks to better internet. With lightning fast speeds up to one gig, you can game like a boss, stream like a pro, and watch like there's no tomorrow. Stream, watch, post, send, and trend. Do it all with our fiber-powered network, bringing you reliable, fast internet. Welcome to BreezeLine. Visit BreezeLine.com for latest offers. Service subject to availability. New customers in select areas only. Visit BreezeLine.com for details. Welcome to mini-episode 173 of Real Life Ghost Stories. And I have four spooky stories for you today. And the last story comes from March the 10th, 2022. And story number one comes from Haley. I've always believed in ghosts. But I've only ever had a few real-life experiences. This experience happened last year during the summer of 2021. My family and I were celebrating my eldest brother's birthday. We had all the extended family over. Everyone was outside on the patio having a small fire, drinking and having a good time. I've always had extremely bad panic attacks, but last summer had to be one of my worst years with it. When I'm having a panic attack, I usually leave the group and take time to collect myself. This particular night, I had a panic attack, I left my family and came inside. It was about 10pm. The inside of my house was dark, no lights on but the glow of the fire coming through the window. One of my cats was sitting at the top of the stairs, just laying down calmly. I went to sit and pet her, which is something I do to ground myself. As I sat petting her, I felt a chill. I thought maybe it was because I was sitting at the top of a pitch black staircase, because I am somewhat scared of the dark. As I was sitting there, I felt as if everything went quiet. I couldn't hear my cat purring anymore, the air conditioner blowing out, and the voices of my family right outside. All I could hear was a subtle ringing in my ear. Then it was like right next to me I heard a quiet, but very clear woman's voice in my ear. All it said was, Hey! Very slowly. It sounded distant, yet right next to me. It almost sounded like it echoed. I got right up, looked around me and realised it was still just me in the house. I walked outside as I was too freaked out to be alone in the house anymore. My dad is a paramedic and would work until about 9pm every night. At this time I would have been around 12 years old. My mom was folding towels and I was just following her around the house as I usually do. My mom went to our bathroom to put some towels in the closet. Right beside the closet in the bathroom there are two vents on the floor that led right into the basement. When you look at the vent, you could see the wood box for the fireplace. It was about the time when my dad would come home, and he had a routine. My dad brought a small cooler to work every day for his lunch, and he wore big steel toe cap boots. As my mom was putting away the towels, we both heard the loud footsteps of my dad's boots walk into the basement and set his lunch cooler down. Then, after about two minutes, we heard nothing else. I asked my mom if we could go down and check if he was there. We walked down together. Obviously, I made her walk down the stairs first. We turned the lights on and there was nothing. Nobody there, no lunchbox on the floor, no boots set beside the fireplace, nothing. In March of 2020, my childhood cat passed away right in front of me. But he was not just a family cat. He was my cat. I spent so much of my time with this cat, he seriously was my best friend. So when this happened it was traumatic and very upsetting. To this day I am still not over it. My dad built a small box to put him in and we buried him in the backyard right outside my bedroom window. Pretty much the next day is when I started having some weird experiences. My cat used to sit on the bathroom counter waiting for someone to turn the sink on for him so he could drink it. Every time I would walk past this sink in the corner of my eye, he was sitting right there, giving me that look of, come turn the sink on for me. But when I would take a second look, there was nothing. 
I would see him run down the stairs. I would see him sitting on my pillow where he slept every night and I would hear him running around downstairs. I do have another cat, but she never moves. She is quiet, she stays in one spot and sleeps all day. So I knew it wasn't her because I've never seen that cat run in my life. I almost thought I was going a little crazy. A couple of days after his death was when my dream started. Every night for about two weeks I had the exact same dream. I would start off standing in my backyard. It was the exact layout of my backyard so sometimes I couldn't even tell if I was dreaming or not. Then at the forest edge I would see my cat. I would try to get him but he just kept walking away. I couldn't run. It was just walking slowly with my cat walking about a metre ahead of me for the whole dream and I could never reach him. I never touched him once in these dreams. Then I would wake up. It somewhat felt like a message that he had passed on and I could never touch him again but I'll always be able to see him. Every time I woke up I would bawl my eyes out just because I could never touch him and it all felt so real. My question is, was I just going a bit crazy or do our beloved pets visit us after their passing to let us know they're okay? Let me tell you, Haley. I believe through this podcast that we've established that it is a scientific, irrefutable fact that your pets come back after they die to say, hey, I'm okay, I love you, and I'm fine. It's a scientific fact. It is proven. My lab coat is firmly on for this one. And I'm telling you, your pets come back to let you know that you're okay and you are not crazy. I did wonder if in the first story where you were having a panic attack and you went into the house to ground yourself and then you heard a woman's voice, whether or not that was actually just part of the panic attack. And again, I never want to delegitimize people's stories, but panic attacks can cause both visual and auditory hallucinations. So it might be that it was a particularly severe panic attack and then you ended up hearing something that wasn't there. Although your dad coming home and um, not actually coming home, that one I can't explain. Don't know. Don't know what to tell you. I always wonder with these stories where you hear something happen before it actually happens, whether it's like a rip in time, whether it's like, I don't know, because it, it sounds like almost an, like an auditory time slip where you hear that thing happen, but it hasn't actually happened yet. And the pattern was that it happens all the time. But in this case, it hadn't happened at all. So is it like an auditory time slip? And story number two comes from Zoe. I have always seen the outline of a dark human shaped shadow that used to stand in the corner of my room. I know it wasn't just a shadow because it only used to turn up at certain points during the night. It used to stand staring at me and for a while I was terrified of it, never daring to look at it for too long, often just scrunching up my eyes and darting under the covers. But after a while I realised it never came closer than my bedroom door and I actually became used to it the fear sort of subsided. Other than the figure, I constantly hear what sounds like somebody downstairs. So much so that one night I was so convinced there was somebody there that I crept into my parents' room and woke up my mum telling her I thought there was someone in the house. We went downstairs and of course there was nothing. My grandma lived on a farm in her 20s or 30s. She would go about her normal farm chores collecting milk and eggs day to day but would say that from time to time she would be able to see a tall man who would sit on one of her hay bales in the barn. A perfectly ordinary looking man, she said, except for his horrendous cough. I don't know how she wasn't slightly alarmed by a strange man sitting on her hay bales, but she was always a bit ditzy and didn't have a great sense of danger. For example, she would often leave my mum, her daughter, in cities on her own with no means of getting home, so I'm going to put it down to that. My grandma said she never felt threatened by this man, so much so that she would sometimes call out a friendly hello to which he would look up at her and smile. She would also see him walking and coughing through the farm orchards, but he never bothered her so she let him be. One day a car pulled up to my grand's front door and two women got out. They claimed they were sisters, who had spent their childhood living at the farm and were wondering if they could just have a look around, as they were in the area and it was very dear to them. So my grandma let them in. Towards the end of their visit, one of the sisters pulled my grandma aside to thank her for letting them look around because it was where their dad had passed away. So it was nice to almost be close to him again. Hearing this, my grandma asked if he'd passed due to any sort of illness to do with coughing and went on to describe the appearance of the man who sat on her hay bales. The sister went completely white. 
She said her dad had in fact died of a horrible illness to do with his lungs, subsequently causing him to have an awful hacking cough in the days leading up to his passing. This last story happened to my dad when he was much younger and still living with his parents. He often visited his grandparents and said that whenever he opened the front door, he always had to take a step back due to being hit in the face by the smell of the cigars that were constantly smoked by his granddad. Eventually, as all people do, his granddad passed away. He said that his grandparents had been very close. So when he died, it was a huge blow to his grandmother. On one random night, my dad was suddenly awoken, only to open his eyes to his deceased granddad telling him off. He was scolding my dad for not taking care of his grandma properly, while asking him to let her know that he was waiting for her. About a year later, his grandma was in hospital with dementia. She was on her way out, and she had it so bad she couldn't speak or move and no one really knew if she was properly there. She was in body, but possibly not in mind. My dad was sitting by her bed, and out of lack of anything else to do, decided to tell her about the visitation he had had from his granddad, and that he wanted her to know that he was waiting. Without a response, my dad eventually left. It was on his way home that he got a phone call. It was his mum, who was calling him to let him know not to bother to visit grandma because she had just passed away. My dad isn't one to believe in ghosts, but he said that he thinks that she heard what he said and went to join Grandpa. While people may say that he was just dreaming, my dad argues otherwise. He says he knows he wasn't dreaming, because when he woke up to see his granddad, all he could smell were the cigars that his granddad always had to hand. I will never ever get over on this podcast. People who just get used to things, you know, people who just get used to shadows in their room. So like Zoe was saying, oh, she realized the shadow didn't get any closer. So she was like, yeah, it's fine. I'm sure that's fine. Whew, I would not be getting used to that. I also love the description of your ditzy grandmother, like leaving her child in random cities. Love that. That sounds like my kind of woman. And what a story about seeing the man around the farm with his hack and cough. I sometimes think it is kind of easy to believe that the older generation would have just gone, okay, there's a man in the hay barn that I see every so often. Sometimes I see him around the orchard. He doesn't do me any harm. I don't do him any harm. So we just ignore each other. I mean, it was fundamentally a more superstitious time. So I do wonder if that contributed to people just going, okay, if it's not doing me any harm, we're just going to ignore it. And that actually it was kind of more commonplace for that to happen in those days than maybe it is now. Now we sort of need to have an answer for everything. You know, we need to have a a rationality or we need to completely understand why something happens or what something is. Whereas in times gone by, people sometimes just accepted things, I think. I'm very aware that that was a wild generalisation. But I'm sticking with it. I'm going for it. And I've said it before and I'll say it again that I do think that sometimes people choose to die. Um, And I do think that sometimes people wait to die before they hear something that they need to hear or before that somebody comes to visit that they want to see. I think that the human spirit is a very strong thing and that um, people tend to hold on until it's like the right time to die. I mean, obviously it doesn't always happen, you know. Obviously people die needlessly and suddenly and too young and before their time and all those things. But I do think there are cases or there seem to be cases where people hold on until they have to see somebody or they wait until they hear something and then they're able to let go. Welcome to BreezeLine, where the sky's the limit thanks to better internet. With lightning fast speeds up to one gig, you can game like a boss, stream like a pro, and watch like there's no tomorrow. Stream, watch, post, send, and trend. Do it all with our fiber-powered network bringing you reliable, fast internet. Welcome to BreezeLine. Visit BreezeLine.com for latest offers. Service subject to availability. New customers in select areas only. Visit BreezeLine.com for details. And story number three comes from Emily. All my life, my mom has told me that I've been able to see and know things that I wouldn't have known otherwise unless I had some sort of gift. I would describe people in my family who had passed on well before I was born, ever since I was around three years old, knowing things like their mannerisms or habits, such as seeing them smoking. I would also say that I could see a man across the street from my grandma's house waving at me. The problem was the man who lived in that house passed away many years before. As well, my grandma used to work at an old train station that was now a museum 
and I distinctly remember always being so cold and scared when I had to go in there. But according to my mom, I used to tell her I would see ghosts, especially in the basement. Creeps me out to think about it even now. I've also been able to predict things, such as my mom's friend going into labour early. I had told her my imaginary friend Katie was coming from far, far away. My mom brushed it off. However, her friend went into labour and was expecting a boy. She called my mom with the news to say that she had a girl and she had named her Katie. That one my mom could never shake off, and since then she knew I had a gift. I'm now a nurse that has always been working in old hospitals and older buildings. I have definitely seen dark shadows in places there shouldn't be, curtains moving and feet around bedridden patients or empty beds. I've sometimes smelled a patient's lotion months after they've passed away. Specific or odd heart rhythms will pop up on our monitors of patients who had died in that room and the most alarming was seeing a face behind me when I opened my front-facing camera in a dark room that I was 100% alone in. I usually try to rationalise or maybe I'm just used to weird things. I've thought about writing in but nothing prompted me. Until last night. At work on a night shift my patient was expected to pass. Once her daughter was ready, we would take off the oxygen and let her body do its thing and pass on. I did think that it was quite odd that the room she was in was absolutely freezing, when normally it is set to a pretty standard room temperature. Her daughter was absolutely lovely and stayed by her side until she had passed to say her goodbyes. On her way out, she was so thankful to us nurses and my heart ached for her losing her mom. It always makes it so much harder when the family is so genuine and kind. The night went on. We cleaned the patient up and sent her to the morgue. Nothing unusual until I went on a break a few hours later. We often tried to sleep on our night breaks for a little bit in a dark room. It should be known that there are some rooms I absolutely refuse to sleep in because old hospitals are hella creepy. This one room I was in is usually a safe place for me to feel relaxed enough to doze off. While I was trying to fall asleep, I felt like there was someone in the room with me. I tried to distract myself and put on a podcast. I then felt a definite pat on the back between my two shoulder blades. I put my hand on my back to ensure that it wasn't a muscle spasm, but it was right between my shoulders like someone was patting me to say good job. I'd like to think it was my patient saying thank you before she went on, and shortly after I did drift off to sleep. Oh, that prediction was so specific, saying Katie was coming from far, far away. My imaginary friend Katie from far, far away. And then your friend, your mom's friend rings and says, I've just had a baby. It was meant to be a boy, but it was actually a girl and I'm calling her Katie. Shut up. I could just imagine if it was my mom, she'd be eyeballing me while she was talking on the phone, doing that really nice phone voice while giving me pure evils while she was on the phone. Because she'd be like, you, you little freak, get over here. <laughs> also did not enjoy the um, face that you saw when you opened your front facing camera in a dark room. Um, We've all done that where we've gotten the fright of our lives when we open our front facing camera and we see our own faces and I can't imagine what that would be like doubled. No way. I think if you're working in that kind of environment where weird things happen regularly I think eventually you would just have to start to rationalise things and I think it's a nice thing to think that this woman patted you on the back just to say thank you you did a good job. I'm off now. See you later. And I'm glad that you were able to drift off to sleep afterwards, that it didn't freak you out too much, that it was weird, but also you were okay with it. And story number four comes from Varsha. My grandma, my mother's mother, had five daughters and all of them lived far away from each other. She lived on her own until she became too old to continue and had to leave her home and go and stay with her fourth daughter, who was a doctor. But she was so far away that it was difficult for Grandma to come and see her home every now and then. Meanwhile, the eldest of the five, Aunt Carthy, was staying in the same town as my Grandma but couldn't take care of her due to some issues. Although Grandma got good care, she was never happy staying away from her home. And sadly, she never got a chance to visit it after staying with her fourth daughter. Grandma's last wish before dying was to see her home, which unfortunately could not be fulfilled. After Grandma's death, her body was brought to her home and then later cremated. Several people talked about, blamed Aunt Carthy for not taking care of Grandma and fulfilling her final wish as she was the eldest and living closest by. This stung her very much 
And let me tell you, Aunt Carthy is a very caring and gentle soul. She just wasn't in a position to do what Grandma wanted. Our family follows the Hindu religion, and in the region where we stay, there is a ritual which is done on the death anniversary of a person by their children to pay respect to the dead. Usually it is done by keeping a lighted lamp and other things for the ritual, along with a feast served in banana leaves in a room and praying to the loved one we lost and paying our respects. Twice during the ritual, everyone leaves the room in which the ritual is held for a couple of minutes and then goes back in. The ritual is attended by the family. The day this incident took place was on my grandma's first death anniversary and my aunt was alone at home when she performed this ritual. Aunt Carthy had prepared a lavish feast and even included in it some candies grandma loved to eat. She prayed for forgiveness for not fulfilling her duties as a daughter during the last months of grandma's life and cried. Then she went out of the room and sat on the chair outside her house deeply upset and lost in thought. Just then she saw a very old woman peeking at her from behind the car on the porch. Aunt Carthy didn't hear the gate nor did she see the woman come in. I'm very thirsty. Can you please give me some water, Mole? asked the old woman. Mole is a commonly used Malayalam word to address a female young enough to be one's daughter or simply a female younger than oneself. Of course, please sit down, my aunt said and directed her to a chair and rushed into the house to get her water, not asking who this woman was nor her name. My aunt wondered where this old woman was going at this time of day, walking alone with no umbrella. In fact, she wasn't carrying anything. This was summertime in our region, and midday sun is so unforgiving, and it is very hot. The roads were empty and none of the neighbours were outside their houses. The old woman was sitting on a chair when my aunt returned with a large glass of water, which the old woman drank full in one go very thirstily. "'Where are you from and where do you want to go?' asked my aunt." I am coming from far away, and I have to go up, replied the old woman. My aunt didn't ask anything else. She was so preoccupied with thoughts about grandma. Aunt Carthy's house is situated at the midpoint of a long, straight, sloping road with no pocket roads, so naturally when someone says they want to go up, it is assumed that they want to go uphill, which is what my aunt assumed. The old woman thanked my aunt for the water and left and my aunt, without thinking much, went inside to keep the glass in the kitchen. That was when she thought of inviting the old woman back and providing her with something from the feast. She ran back outside to the gate and looked up the road but didn't see the old woman. In fact, the road was completely empty. Nobody was in sight and no vehicles were passing by. There were still no neighbours outside. It was eerily quiet. Everything was still like it was stuck in time. It took my aunt less than a minute to come back to the gate and there was no way that old woman could have walked so fast uphill and reached the top under the summer sun at that age in such a short amount of time. No way. Neither did my aunt hear any vehicle that could have given a ride to the old woman. Of course Aunt Carthy was bewildered about the whole situation and worse had no one to ask if they saw an old woman walking on her side of the road. She felt sad she couldn't offer the old woman anything other than a glass of water and went inside the house to finish up the ritual. That was when it struck her. What if it was her mother who came? She was as old and wore clothes just like Grandma. Her coming on the very day and time of the ritual, no one outside to see her, the still and silent atmosphere and most of all the abrupt, unexplainable disappearance. My aunt cried a lot after that, believing her mother had come to visit her and probably forgave her by asking for a glass of water and letting her serve her mother one last time. A chance for redemption. I don't know if it was my grandma's spirit disguised as another old woman or just a random stranger who coincidentally came specifically to my aunt's house during the ritual. I think it's what we make of our experiences that defines it. And even though it's not my experience, I would like to think it was my grandma who came that day and she bears no ill will towards anyone and is happy wherever she is. I absolutely love that interpretation that Varshna said. I think it's what we make of our experience that defines it. I think that kind of sums up this podcast really, you know, and it's why I take a sort of a non-judgmental approach to listener stories, because it's not me who gets to define what somebody else's experience is or how it impacted them or whether it's paranormal 
it's what the people make of the stories themselves and what they believe about their own stories is what defines them. I also think that is a really amazing ritual. I didn't say the name of the ritual in the story because I had pronunciation issues as always, but it seems to be called Agathu Vekal, which is the ritual of having like a feast um, on the death anniversary of a person by their children. And I really like it. Like, I really like that idea of having a ritual to celebrate the person who has passed on the anniversary of their death and having food and paying respects and all of those things. And look, maybe it was your grandmother's spirit that came back to give redemption to your aunt. And if your aunt was able to walk away from that experience and feel as though she'd been forgiven for this perceived slight, then absolutely, then that's that's what matters. And then that's what makes the experience so important. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Real Life Ghost Stories. Thank you to Haley, Zoe, Emily and Varsha for sending in your stories. Remember, the last story came from March the 10th, 2022. If you would like to know anything about Real Life Ghost Stories, you can check out the website, reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. If you also would like to hear some extra Real Life Ghost Stories content, you can subscribe to patreon.com forward slash Real Life Ghost Stories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get access to heaps of extra content and every main and mini episode completely ad free. And on that note, I shall see you next time. 